What's up everyone, it's Nunu here and today I'm excited because I'm gonna just basically review Pen is Source Code with you. If you haven't checked Pen, please do it. It's this simple, little, privacy-focused analytics package for PHP. Just type Composer Require, you add data pen and bam, you're done. You have analytics in your project. And today I decided to basically do an informal video reviewing the source code of Pen. And that being said, let's just get started. Uh, let's start with the basic dot github folder which if you have used github you know that this particular folder is kind of to instruct the the ci of github about what to do when you push some code or you open a pull request and obviously we want to run our ci to test our uh, code so typically here i have two files the formats and the tests the formats are basically for run any kind of static testing uh, that would be you know pint or a php stan and finally i have also this test.yml file which typically runs my past php a test suite and potentially with some coverage as well and mutation testing and just below i have this funding file which at the time uh, just basically have uh, my github sponsors account david one as well patreon and also paypal just below the .github folder because this is a lot of our package. So we have our database folder with migrations and typically this is have regular Laravel migrations where people will publish them in their projects. Uh, just below database we have the docs uh, folder. Typically here I have all the banners, all the logos, potentially any work I share on uh, Twitter regarding images. I like to keep them all the images here because I just tend to reuse them over time and also for the readme I kind of want to access these images and I can just simply do it uh, by typing this static URL which allows me to basically uh, fetch the image we put on this docs folder then we have this resources folder which at the moment contains a javascript code that gets also published on the public folder of my user the code is written on typescript um nothing really specially happening here besides a lot of magic but typically i have uh, three main things here so the first easy ones, which probably is the ones we are going to start with, is the listeners. So we are listening basically two events. One is uh, the click listener on the DOM. So basically we want to, uh, you know, listen to all the clicks on the DOM and register those clicks. Same goes with uh, when the mouser goes over some elements. We also want to track that. But finally, we have this very magic uh, class on JavaScript called the mutation observer, which allows me to basically hook a callback every time, every time the DOM changes. So every time the DOM changes, I want to basically basically try to understand if there is a new impression uh, to be accounted for. Um, so this is basically the three events we are listening and we have a whole you know uh, JavaScript code which will basically capture those events, batch those events to the backend and so the backend can then process them. And the backend code is typically within my source folder and let's get started by the beginning where we have the http layer which will receive the request and i feel like that will be probably within my uh, service provider which will be within adapters laravel providers pen service provider so within the pen service provider we basically have you know a bunch of code but the most important one is this one called uh, the route which will basically create the route for um, receiving my events on the back end okay so <clears throat> on my user application I basically reduced this back end route which will be responded by this event controller store method we can see this that class within http controllers event controller so this event controller will basically store the given request uh, <clears throat> which typically is a collection of events which have a name which is exactly what you put within data pen attribute but also a type which can be if i'm not mistaken something within click over or impression 
So if we go back here into the event controller, we receive a collection of those events. And for each one of those events, we want to actually store them on a database. And for that, I have this create event action. Now, undeniably, now that I'm thinking, I could probably defer this job and answer this the fastest as possible, which is something I can do to improve this. But once I start these events on the back end, I respond no content to the front end. So let's start by checking this create event request, a simple, uh, you know, form request class where I have a couple of rules to validate a given event. And then, if I'm not mistaken, we have the action which will effectively store the event on the back end. And the action, if I'm not mistaken, is within source actions create event, which we inject the analytics repository, which is basically the place we are going to persist the event. But uh, we, when we are executing this action, we are basically calling the increment repository, which is the place where we actually persist this on the back end. Um, you're probably thinking why we have, you know, probably some complicated terms like repository actions and things like that. So the reason is because at the moment we have this Laravel adapter, which, you know, implements some of these um, patterns and uh, contracts, interfaces, but the goal is potentially expand this a little bit to make it agnostic from Laravel. Uh, so that's why it's a little bit more advanced in terms of code, but um, just try to stick with me a little bit. Uh, but yeah, just to, just to recap that a little bit, we have this uh, recontracts folder where we kind of design some interfaces. So potentially we have other frameworks being compatible with uh, PanPHP. But that being said, let's go back into our create event, which calls the increment method within our repository uh, class. And again, this is an interface, but we have an implementation of this interface within the adapters Laravel folder, which is called the database analytics repository, which implements that given interface. And the only thing it does, it's basically kind of, you know, receive the given name and event type. If we have that event already, we are going to basically uh, store it and increment the given column. If not, we are going to insert a new row. So nothing really special about this, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, this is basically HTTP layer, kind of simple. And we also have the console layer, which allows us to do three things. The first one is obviously install the pen um, project in your um, application, which is basically publishing migrations, uh, confirm if you want to run the migrations once they are published and then give you, you know, a nice UI with Termwind. Then we have this pan command, which allows us to um, visualize all the, um, the analytics in your console. And we obviously are injecting the repository and to fetch all the analytics. And uh, then we are just displaying them. Something we are, I'm doing here is having this class analytic presenter to basically kind of prepare a little bit the information before displaying them on my table. And this class is kind of simple and basically does some jobs such as, you know, compute the human readable number for the impressions, try to come up with some percentage that is like rounded and things like that. So kind of preparing the data before we actually send that data to our table. And um, yeah, we have a table, regular symphony table with some columns and to display the information on the, uh, the terminal. Uh, that being said, I think regarding the source code, nothing else can be said about this. Kind of simple, I feel like. And I have some conventions regarding code, such as uh, strict types, you know, internal classes, final read only. And this is basically for consistency. I feel like sometimes it don't really matter if I use these things or not, but I really like to keep the code consistent, uh, you know, all pretty, all my classes need to be this way. I always have a comment. So, you know, I feel I'll, I like to see my code consistent and that's mainly the reason why I have followed some of these patterns sometimes. So finally, I have a strong test suite, as you may know. 
I'm a big fan of testing and I want to have a strong test suite. So we have a test for every single thing we find here and 100% code coverage. And if you're not familiar with testing, just please just check out pastphp.com, past which is the framework I'm using here for testing. It's kind of a cool project, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of testing and Everything we have on Pan PHP is fully tested. Um, so uh, I have tests regarding the console, tests regarding the HTTP layer. And one cool thing I always do is that every time I have a test within the feature folder, it will basically impact either the entry points of my app, which is like HTTP and console. And each time I have a test within unit, I mimic the structure of my project. So you will see exactly a test for each file I have on my servers. However, on feature, you will see a test for each entry point of my app, which would be the console or the HTTP layer. So kind of interesting thing around the test suite, I feel like. Um, what else can be said here? We have obviously a change log to keep in track everything we change on this project. A composer.json file, <clears throat> which at the moment kind of um, have an interesting thing, which is we don't require any dependency. However, if you're trying to use pan outside or within Laravel, well, I require Laravel 11, a couple of uh, quality tools to ensure my project is fully tested. Uh, it's in using 100% types with past plugin type coverage, uh, good test suite, good coding style, uh, you know, and more. Uh, what else can be said? Oh, within this composer JSON, I always use uh, my composer scripts, which basically it's kind of a cool thing because sometimes people are jumping into your project. They don't know exactly which commands to run to run the test suite. So can, they can simply run composer tests and they basically are running the entire test suite, which is an interesting thing. Uh, finally, I have uh, phpstand.nian. Of course, PHP stand is something I always use in my projects, allows me to test the types in my project and I run that at max level. Uh, Rector PHP to keep my code basically uh, modern and using the latest features of PHP. And obviously I'm using TypeScript for uh, the source code, which is kind of cool. And yeah, this was a review of pen PHP is source code. I I was queen to do this video because I always follow these patterns regarding every time I'm writing a package for PHP. So let me know what you think about this video. If you want to see more about these coding style reviews, uh, just let me know, okay? Thank you so much for the support on the recent stuff I've released. Um, thank you so much. And yeah, I guess I see you next time.